Hi, how are you guys doing today? Good. Right. I'm excited to talk to you. <laughs> excited to talk to you guys too. I kind of want to start off with John first. Sure. How has the art of uh, puppeteering evolved in season two, especially like with the introduction of the new characters and the complex um, emotions they bring? Well, you know, I think uh, there's there's a lot of different ways that we try to kind of step up the, the puppetry this season. And one of them is actually um, when you talk about the emotions, uh, the Gorgs actually, you know, Ma and Pa Gorg, they have a lot of emotions that they go through this season. There's a lot of um, a, a, a lot of their storyline that we have to carry this year. And we wanted to make them even more expressive and be able to show more. So the original puppets were very limited in the way that they moved. And the Creature Shop went in and added uh, new eye functions and new ways for their mouths to move. And so that's one way that we definitely upped things. And then also, you know, we're always looking at ways we can do something live in camera on set as opposed to having to, to modify it digitally afterwards. So on set, we would always say, well, what if we did this? And what if we added this? And what if we added one more puppeteer to make this happen? So we're always trying to kind of, you know, uh, as Halle calls it, the Kermit riding a bicycle magic moments of puppetry. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? We try to find even more how do they do that moments this season. Okay, awesome. And then, um, Hadley, I had a, a question for you as well. So given the series history of environmental storytelling, are there specific um, contemporary like, uh, environmental issue you aim to highlight in season two? Yes, thank you for asking that. It's such a big part of the series and this season in particular. So, you know, when we talk to families, talk to kids, what's most um, important issue to them in the world, it's climate change. So we were like, okay, let's tackle climate change. It was also food insecurity and what, how we evolved that into an environmental thing was environmental sustainability. So um, there's many different uh, environmental stories that we're tackling in this series, but the solution to it all, which I found really wonderful was climate hope. And also um, another uh, issue, and I'll have you talk about the stories. I don't want, I love it when Matt tells the story, the specifics we did, but Climate hope is what we try to um, impart. And then also just finding out things like we brought in all these incredible advisors. And there's this one issue where um, there's an invasive species, uh, strawberries in the radish gardens that, you know, as well, that choke out the radishes, but also the gorgs are putting toxic fertilizer onto the plants. And so how are they gonna solve the crisis? Our advisors said to us, you know what, one way that may be very interesting for your show to tackle this subject is to look to the stewards of the land. Stewards of the land have thousand year old solutions to environmental problems that maybe the answer's already there. And we, we were like, mind blown. Let's do that. Let's go find the original stewards of Fraggle Rock. And that, so that became part of the series. And I think it's a beautiful message to bring forward because that's something we can do now. It's an actionable item. Um, in our planet, but do you want to say how we did bring it to life in the stories? Yeah, I mean, just in, <laughs> in general, you know, we we don't want to uh, hit anything with too heavy a hand. It's it's still it's a big topic, right? Yeah, yeah it's heavy. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> technically so, climate change. Yeah, so our Fraggle version of that is is Doc is experimenting uh, with wind power in her lab, and this kind of causes a windstorm in Fraggle Rock through the hole. And it causes all sorts of problems and changes. And a strawberry gets blown into the Gorg's garden. And like Hallie said, it kind of overtakes the radishes. And it really messes with the Fraggles' way of life. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of fear and anxiety over it. And they kind of just uh, figure out that uh, they need to stick together and, and work together. They might not have all the answers, but if they... They stick together and they they're hopeful and they listen to each other. Then they will uh, come up with a solution. We yeah. wanted a hopeful message. We wanted climate hope. We I, we think that families that's what they want to hear and those are the tools they need right now. Wow, that's actually beautiful. I had no idea. <laughs> that's 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 amazing that you guys are bringing this you know for everyone pretty much to see. So I I think that's brilliant for you guys to put that in as a message in this and then. Quick question for you three. Can you describe the collaborative process among you three when it came to making key creative decisions for season two? Oh, we fight. We yeah, hate banana, each other. banana cream we pies. Like, whoever no. <laughs> wins, banana cream pies wins. Well, no, I mean, I think, I think we really respect 
what everyone has to offer. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, like the baseline is everyone who's working on this show is coming from a place of passion for the show to be the best it could be. So you always, even if you don't agree about something, you know, it's not coming from a personal place or anything. It's coming from a place of like, you see it landing here. I see it landing here. And much in the fraggly way, we would kind of go, okay, well, how do we get there together? How do we figure this out? Um, and, and it's funny, we all, act as the fraggles in different ways sometimes, you know, like we can all be boobers sometimes, we can all be mogies. <laughs> so it's just, it's just figuring out, uh, I, I think the word is trust. We really trust each other creatively and trust each other's skill sets. And so, you know, and, and we gave people crazy, you know, assignments where you'd say like to the, the you know, the, the art direction team, like, oh, we need uh, 4,000 radishes, bye. And they'd have to figure it out and they would, you know, and you just trusted <laughs> that they would. So there, it's a lot of, a lot of trust, I and think. that's kind of the Jim Henson ethos, right? Yes. Like, yeah. just you never know where the best idea is going to come from, and the best idea wins, you know. Yeah, and let people do their work and and do it well. But listening and respecting to each other, yeah, to, yeah. And we also divvied up the work, right? We were like, mm -hmm. okay, you're dealing with you know the creature shop and the music. I'm going to deal with you know the messaging. I'm going to deal with the actual production, you know, mechanics of it all dealing with the writing. So it also helped to be able to have like the ability to work together, but also to like go forth and like, you know, conquer our one department. <laughs> um, so we weren't all doing everything the same. Right. That's right. Uh, we were coming back to the table at the end of the day and saying, okay, this is what I need from you. This is what I did. This is what I found. So And it, and it sounds earnest yeah. and, and corny, but truly we're a huge, giant family. There's so much love amongst each other. Yeah. And that goes with the crew, the cast, the, the, the everything. I mean, you just develop this love of like, wow, we're all making Fraggle Rock. And there, there's there's just a, I don't know, there's a, there's a like a joyful spirit that kind of carries you through. All righty. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. I loved meeting you guys. So thank you so much for taking the time and interviewing with me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a great one.